you first need to, before you decide what fruits you want to grow, you need to figure out what can I grow here because what in my area is, um, is out there in terms of diseases. You know, what am I going to get? Is am I in a high fire blight area? Am I in an area that gets anthracnose? Am I going to get a lot of powdery mildew? Um, how are my tomatoes going to grow? Hey guys, happy Memorial Day. And I wanted to do a uh, Memorial Day PSA because it's been a really wet and wild um, spring. Here in Pennsylvania, here near Philadelphia, I'm sure most of the mid-Atlantic, maybe even most of the Northeast has just had, you know, very humid conditions. If you look above, it's, it's cloudy, it's dark, it's dreary. All I want to do is stay inside and watch my own videos. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, you know, this PSA, I wanted to let you guys know that when you're having lots of rainy conditions like this, it's really not so great for your trees in terms of uh, disease and the spread of disease that many trees, many fruit trees, many fruiting plants in general can get. And it becomes very easy for, you know, for these diseases to spread in these humid, wet conditions. And that's why people that live in the Northeast and most of the, the East Coast just in general, Florida, Georgia, um, Virginia, and Pennsylvania, and Maryland, and Del I mean, most of the mid-Atlantic and down is just a very humid climate. And if you're thinking about growing fruit trees, and you're thinking about what fruits you want to grow, um, well, you got the standards. You got things you can get in the store that are very popular, which are like apples and pears and stone fruits, like cherries and peaches and nectarines and plums and apricots. And you know, they're, they're great fruits. They are, but they're very difficult to grow here uh, because they, it's just very humid here. And there's a lot of diseases and insect problems that attack these trees. And if you're not um, spraying, even something that's organic, then you're gonna lose your tree. Your tree might die, you might not get fruit, you might get lousy fruit, you might get ugly fruit, you might get uh, just, really just a dead tree, I think is the most common thing, because you know, I can't tell you how many times I see people or hear about people that went to the store and they bought an apple tree or at like Home Depot or something. They bought a tree at Home Depot, they bring it home, and then like a year or two, it does nothing for them and it dies. And they can't figure out why the hell it died. Well, the PSA here today is to just tell you guys about some of the diseases and things that can affect your trees. Um, so before you think about growing those fruits that I just named, all the stone fruits, a stone fruit is a fruit with a pit, or an apple tree, or a pear tree. There's lots of things in the Northeast, in the mid-Atlantic climate uh, that really affect these, th these things. And if you're not careful and you're not particularly paying attention to what's going on, you could be wasting your time. Uh, me, as an example, I grow mostly fig trees. I love figs. That's my favorite fruit. My second favorite fruit is persimmons. And my third favorite fruit is pomegranates. And those three fruits are completely unaffected by basically everything in my climate except for the cold except for the probably, probably the most important thing is the cold but i grow them in containers and i um because i love them so much and I'm, I'm willing to put up with the the container aspect of it but guess what the figs are fresh they're basically unaffected by everything by all all kinds of insect damage this is a prist absolutely pristine leaf some figs do get some rust. This is a tree I got from a friend, and he grows his trees, and he lives in Ariz in, um, not Arizona, he lives in Louisiana. And Louisiana is probably one of the most humid climates on, in the United States. This guy has rust. You can see here, really closely, these dark spots, these dark brown, orange, yellowish spots is rust. And when you have water, sitting on a leaf for too long 
that disease can spread very quickly. Citrus, another example of something that has very few problems. Here we have a mulberry down here. Mulberries in the same family of figs. This is a Noir of Spain mulberry. It's a Morris Nigra variety. It's supposed to be very tasty, but guess what? It has rust. Apples. Guess what? It has rust. A form of apple rust called cedar apple rust. These orange spots on it. Um, I've gone through this year so far pretty scot-free and I think a lot of that has to do with the spraying that I've done. Um, when your trees wake up from dormancy you're supposed to give them a dormant spray. You know like a week or two before they wake up when you start to see those buds swell you spray the tree cover the whole all the branches and all the buds and it kills a lot of the insects that may be harboring in your in your buds and it kills some of the diseases and it really puts your trees out on a right path uh, for success for that year and then I also spray with uh, with garden dust and I use a whole bunch, bunch of different things but it's mainly just sulfur and copper um, and it has some pyrethrins in it I believe which is another organic uh, material and it really just does a nice job preventing the spread of disease on my trees as an example something else you could get these are my peach trees here my espalier peaches and they look pristine again very quickly could this turn the other way and they could get something called peach leaf curl and peach leaf curl is not a joke um, that rust you saw earlier in the video is nothing compared to peach leaf, leaf curl it could kill the tree if you leave it so you have to properly identify and know what's going on and be able to treat what's what's happening to your trees Another thing here, which I'm sure most of you are aware of, is a disease that it's soil-borne that tomatoes get. And tomatoes get this disease and the lower, usually the lower leaves get the disease and they eventually fall off and they, uh, and they die. And it hinders the growth of the tomato plant and hinders the production of the tomato plant. Here you got grapes that can get some powdery mildew, get some rot. Um, just absolutely, this, this guy has cedar apple rust pretty bad. This is an apple tree. And the whole thing really is covered with these orange spots. Not only that, but they can get fire blight. In fact, I think one of my trees had fire blight. So what I did was I went ahead and say this tip right here has the fire blight. I went ahead and just cut it all the way back. As soon as I saw it, we've had, I think we've had record rainfall uh, this past month so you know this has just been a Memorial Day PSA and I I want you guys to be aware that if you're gonna grow fruit you know grow some fruit first that's problem free I just wanted to give you guys a short PSA and tell you guys you know hey it's dangerous out there for your trees <laughs> This is, this is an important time for your trees. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, yeah, hope you guys are enjoying your holiday. So I'll see you later.